Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to uh, offer you a few problems about series. Uh, this is the second set of problems in the same uh, topic on sequences and, and series. Um, usually, the problems in this particular uh, uh, in this particular uh, topic are very very simple. Like, okay, here is the geometric sequence. Here is uh, the first element of this sequence. This is uh, the quotient. Please calculate using the formula the sum of the first 100 elements or something like this. Well, that's not an interesting kind of problems. I wanted to present you something which is a little bit more challenging. So please bear with me. They're not difficult, but unusual, I would say. And, uh, and yeah, that might be actually challenging for some of you. Um, which is the purpose of this course anyway, to challenge your mind, right? All right, starting from the beginning. First is a relatively easy uh, problem, which I have already mentioned uh, in one of my theoretical uh, lectures. Uh, if you sum the first n odd numbers, uh, you will get n squared. All right, so 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus etc. plus my nth odd number is 2n minus 1. So if you summarize, it would be n squared. Well, indeed, for the first one, it will be 1, which is 1 squared. For the first two, it will be 1 plus 3 is 4, which is 2 squared. For the first three, it will be 1 plus 3, which is 4 plus 5, 9, which is 3 squared, etc. So we have to prove this formula. We can prove it in two different ways. One is, I would say, straightforward. You can just prove it by induction. Now, obviously, it's true for uh, uh, n equals 1. Now, we assume that for n equals k, it's true. So when a is equal to k plus 1, we have one extra element, which is uh, the sum of the first k element, which we assume is k squared, plus the next element, which is 2k plus 1, right? If the k element is 2k minus 1, then the next odd number would be 2k plus 1. And obviously, this e is k plus 1 squared. And uh, which basically proves our formula. So for n equals to k plus 1, the result is k plus 1 squared. Slightly different, not maybe as straightforward solution is to use the same methodology I was using to derive the formula for um, arithmetic progression. Uh, so let's just have the same sum in reverse starting from 2n minus 1, then it would be 2n minus 3, the previous odd number, etc., and the one, the last one would be 1. So that's exactly the same as if we sum them up together, um, we will have uh, the first one and the, and, and the last one would be 2n, obviously, then the second and the second from that side would be again 2n, etc., etc. So every one of them, 2n minus 1 plus 1, would be 2n. The number of these would be obviously n, n components in this sum, which means that 2s is equal to n times 2n, which is 2n squared, so the s is equal to n squared. That's another way to prove it. And finally, obviously, you can use the formula for sum of arithmetic progression with the first element 1 and the difference 2 in this particular case. Uh, substitute all these guys into the formula, and you will also get n squared, obviously. Uh, now, but I never remember the formula for sum of arithmetic progression, or geometric for the same token. I do remember the way how I derived the formula by summing up in the reverse 
uh, order. And basically, if you remember this methodology, to come up with a formula is really like a one-minute deal. So, um, well, different people approach it differently. Some people prefer to memorize the formula. I don't memorize the formulas. I memorize the way how these formulas are derived. So that's what actually, you know, I... Well, I'm not really saying that you should do it this way. You do whatever you want. But, uh, well, it probably very individual. Some people prefer to memorize the formula. Some people prefer to memorize the way how it was derived. And in this particular case, by the way, the methodology of derivation of the formula by just summing up in reverse is very simple to remember. The formula is, well, for me, it's much more complex. So basically, we have proven that the sum of n odd natural numbers gives you n squared. End of problem. Next. Find the elements uh, of arithmetic progression if their sum, uh, find four elements of arithmetic progression. If their sum is 1 and sum of their cubes is 0 0.1. All right. So we have four members, four elements of arithmetic progression, which is A, next is A plus D, next one is A plus 2D, and next one is A plus 3D. Okay, four members of arithmetic progression, which basically um, uh, have uh, two variables which they depend upon. The first variable is A, which is the first element of this progression. The second element is D, which is the difference of arithmetic progression. Right? So these are four elements. Now, we know two things about uh, these four elements that their sum is equal to 1, and the sum of their cubes is equal to 0 0.1. So we have two variables, and we have two uh, conditions, which means we have actually a system of two equations with two unknown variables. So this is one equation, and this is another equation. Well, quite frankly, it looks a little scary. This is the third power. We don't really know how to solve equations of the third power. Um, however, um, these are certain specific conditions which will allow you to simplify the whole thing so you don't really have to solve the problems, uh, the equations of, uh, of the third degree. Now, what can we do about this? Well. First of all, I would probably uh, find out what is uh, A in terms of D from the first equation. Now we have 1, 2, 3, 4. We have 4 A's, so it's 4 A plus D and 2 D and 3 D, that's 3, 6, that's 6 D equals to 1 from which I can derive that A is equal 1 minus 6D over 4. Now, I can substitute this A into these guys, right? Having only one equation with only one variable D. Now, let's do it. So, I have 1 minus 6d over 4 cube plus a plus d let me just uh, think about what it is if I plus d here I have 4 as a common denominator it means it will be 4d so 1 minus 6d plus 4d which is 1 minus 2d over 4 cube Next. Next is plus 2D. 2D, 4 and 2D is 8D on the top, so it will be 1 minus 6D plus 8D, so it will be 1 plus 2D over 4 cube. 
and the last one would be a plus 3d so if I have plus 3d here it's 12 d on the top in the numerator minus 6d plus 12d so it's plus 6d so it's 1 plus 6d over 4 cubed and what is equal to 0 0.1 okay. now I don't need this the only thing which I do need is the fact that a is equal 1 minus 6d over 4 from the first equation. And this is how the second equation is transformed into when we are using uh, only one variable, substituting this value a into each, uh, into each member. All right. Now, um, you see 1 minus 6d, 1 plus 6d. 1 minus 2d, 1 plus 2d. I will use a very easy formula a uh, cube plus b cube is equal to a plus b a squared minus a b plus b squared. Well, for those who know about this, that's obvious. For those who don't, just multiply them, uh, and, and you will see that this is exactly what it is. Because this is a cube, and then you have minus a squared b and plus a b squared. This would be plus b, a squared b, and minus a b squared. So it will cancel out, and only a cube and b cube will remain. So I will use this formula, uh, grouping these two guys and these two guys. Now, what do I have? So this plus this, it's a plus b. As you see, it will be 1 minus 6d over 4 and 1 plus 6d over 4. Now, if I sum them together, my 6d would cancel out because it's minus and plus, and all I will have is a plus b, this plus this would be one fourth, right? Now, multiply by, now here I have to really do more or less one minus 6d over four square minus a b. Uh, I have to multiply this by this, it will be minus uh, 1 minus 6d, 1 plus 6d, divided by 16, right? 4 and 4. And finally, plus d squared, which is 1 plus 6d squared, divided by 16. I'll do it as well. Okay, that's my, these two elements. Now I have to add, now one quarter is, now I have to do the same with these two. So it's plus, again, uh, the sum of these two, a plus b, the sum, 2d will cancel out, so I will have only one quarter uh, plus one quarter. Oh, wait a minute, did I make a mistake? Uh, yes, it's two-fourths, actually. One minus 6d and one plus 6d. Yes, 6d will cancel out, but one plus one would be two, which means it's two-fourths or one-half. My mistake, sorry about this. Similarly, here. <coughs> Very similar, but instead of 6d, I will put 2d. 2d squared divided by 16 minus 1 minus 2d, 1 plus 2d, 16 plus 1 plus 2d squared, 16. And the whole thing is equal to 1 tenth, right? So that's how my equation looks now. Is it simpler? Well, um, we have to basically uh, simplify it a little bit more than that. Well, first of all, one half and this 16, one half and this 16, so it's one thirty second actually, right? If I will take the 16s out of this, it will be one thirty second. So, one tenth, this is one tenth, is equal to one thirty seconds of 
And now I have these guys and these guys. Let me just open the parentheses. 1 minus 12g plus 36g squared, right? This is 1 minus 6g squared. Plus, uh, sorry, minus. Minus. Now, 1 minus 6d and 1 plus 6d is 1 minus 36d squared. So it will be minus 1 plus 36d squared. Now, plus this, plus 1 plus 12g plus 36d squared. Here, 1 minus 4d plus 4d squared minus 1 plus 4d squared and plus 1 plus 4d plus 4d squared. Close parenthesis. This is 1 30 second of the whole expression. And that's what we have now. Is it easier? Yes, it is. Because now, lots of things will cancel out. Now, what cancels out? 12d, 12d, 4d, and 4d. Uh, plus 1, minus 1, minus 1, plus 1. So what's left? Uh, 1 tenth is equal to 1 thirty second of, I have 1, and another 1. So I have 2. Now, I don't have anything d in the first degree. I, all, uh, I only have d to the second degree. So what I have, 36 plus 36 plus 36, it's 3 times 36, which is 108. And 4 and 4 and 4, which is 12, and it's 120. So 120d squared. That's what I have. Now, do you see how easy it is? Well, let's now simplify it a little bit. Uh, so we multiply this by 32, so we have 32 is equal to uh, 10 times 20 plus 120 d square, so it's 200 plus 1200 d square, am I right? Yeah, I think we can uh, reduce it by by two. So it's sixteen, actually by four. So it's eight. No, it's better to do it by two. So it's sixteen is equal to one hundred plus. Now, I think I screwed up something. No. No, 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 no. That's wrong. So, it's 2 plus 120 d squared is equal to 32 over 10. Now, if we look 2, which is, so 120 d squared is equal to 32 over 10 minus 2, which is 12 tenths, right? This is 20 over 10. 32 over 10 minus 20 over 10 is 12 over 10. And now, okay, now we can reduce it by 120 to get the d square. So, if 120 d squared is equal to 12 over 10. d squared is equal to 
12 over 120 times 10, which is reduced by 12, which is 100, from which d is equal 1 tenth. Well, isn't that wonderful? Such a complicated thing gives us uh, one simple solution, one tenth. Now, actually, there is another solution to this, d equals minus 110. Well, we will check if our uh, checking procedure will, will produce something similar. Now, let's talk about a now. So, a is equal to 1 minus 6 times 1 tenth divided by 4, which is 6 tenths, which is 4 tenths, 4 tenths divided by 4, which is 1 tenth. So for d equals 1 tenth, a equals 1 tenth. And then talking about uh, arithmetic progression, which is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and 0 0.4, right? The first element is 0 0.1, and the difference is 0 0.1. So these are our four numbers. Let's check it out. Their sum is equal to 0 0.1 plus 2, that's 3 tenths, that's 6 tenths, that's 10 tenths, which is 1. That's exactly what we need. Now, their cubes are 0 0.001, 0 0.008, 0 0.027, and 0 0.64, right? 64 thousands. This is 9, this is 36, and this is 101 thousandths, which is 1 tenth. So the sum of these uh, is equal to 1, and sum of these is equal to 1 tenth. So we exactly did whatever we need to do, this is the solution. How about minus one tenth? Well, let's just, just check it out. one tenth, a is equal to one minus, which is plus 0 0.6 over uh, four, which is 0 0.6 over four, which is 0 0.4. So we have 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and 0 0.1, which is basically exactly the same kind of arithmetic sequence, but in reverse. We started from the most uh, uh, from the maximum and going with a negative uh, uh, difference to to the beginning to the uh, to the zero point one, and obviously since we got the same numbers, we uh, have all these uh, equations satisfied. Their sum is equal to one, and the, the sum of their cubes is equal to zero point one. So this is it. This is <coughs> uh, one of the problems which are not as trivial as typical problems uh, about geometric and uh, arithmetic sequences. And I have a couple of more, so um, let, me, let me just try one more thing and probably that would be it for this particular lecture. So what's my next? Find the lengths of three sides of triangle if they are integer numbers forming arithmetic progression, and the perimeter of the triangle is 15, and find all the solutions. So, I have a triangle. I know that all these lengths are integer numbers. The perimeter is 15. And I also know that they are constituting three numbers which are really a, an arithmetic progression, which means starting from some number x 
and a difference d, I would have another x plus d and another x plus 2d. So what do I have? I have the perimeter, which is x plus x plus d plus x plus 2d equals 15. Now this is what? 3x plus 3d is equal to 15. Or 3x plus d equals 15. Now, how can I resolve this? How can I find the solution if there are two unknowns in one uh, equation? Well, very simple. I know that these are integer numbers, right? Which means x plus d is integer. So, how many, obviously from here, how many integer numbers x and d, positive integer numbers, obviously, because we're talking about um, triangle and its lengths. So, how many natural numbers x and d exist so that their sum is equal to 5. Well, it's actually a very limited number. Let me just um, enumerate all of them, and we will get all the solutions. So, if x plus d is equal to 5, then either I have 1 comma 4, or 2 comma 3, or 3 comma 2, or 1 comma 4. So we have four different solutions. Zero cannot be here, and negative numbers cannot be here. So I have four different pairs of x and d, which means there are four different triangles, one with sides 1, plus 4, 5, plus 4, 9. And obviously the perimeter is 15. In this case, sides are 2, plus 3, 5 plus 3, 8. So 2, 5, and 8 also give me 15 as a perimeter. Now, 3 and 2 are 3, uh, plus 2, 5, plus 2, 7. This is also a solution. And finally, uh, sorry, I had to put 4, 1 instead of 1, 4. And finally, I have 4 plus 1, 5 plus 1, 6. So these are different triangles which can be constructed using integer, positive integer numbers which constitute arithmetic progression and the perimeter is 15. That's easy. And a similar problem, I think, I have. Find the lengths of three sides of a triangle with the integer number forming a geometric progression. And the product of their lengths is 216. So it's geometric progression, which means if one is equal to a, another is aq, and the third one is aq squared. And their product, which is a times aq times aq squared, is equal to 216. Well, this is obviously a cubed times, times q cubed, which is actually a q cubed. And this is equal to 216. Now, 216 is 6 cubed. 6 times 6 is 36, times 6 is 216. So AQ is equal to 6. Now, same logic. How many different A and Q exist? Natural numbers, positive integer, which uh, have a, a product of their multiplication, 6. Well, let's think about it. One times six, two times three, three times two, and six times one. Right? So one and six, which means one, six, and 
36. So these are lengths of the triangle. Is it possible to have these lengths of triangle? Oh, by the way, that's actually something which I had to check for the arithmetic progression uh, as well. These cannot be the lengths of the triangle, because as you know, sum of any two sides should be greater than the third one. Now, let me return back to the previous case. When I had... Uh, when I had... Uh, 5 as a sum, right? So it's um, 1, 4, 2, 3, 3, 2, and 4, 1. Mm. Yeah. So in one case it would be 1 plus 4, 5 plus 4, 9. Right. Well, this is not possible to have as a triangle. So this solution is not good. So I kind of rush to the conclusion, basically forgetting that we are talking about geometric uh, properties. Now, 2, 3 would be 2 plus 3, 5 plus 3, 8. Same thing. Some of these 2 is smaller than this. Not good. 3, 2 would be 3 plus 2, 5 plus 2, 7. This is greater than this. This is good. And 4, 1, which is 4... 5 and 6. This is also good. This is also good. So I have only two triangles. Now in this particular case, well, it's good that I have noticed. Um, so uh, this is not the right triangle because there is no triangle with these sides. Although it satisfies our equation, but we cannot really build a triangle because there is one more condition that the sum of any two should be greater than the third one. How about two and three? So the first one would be two, multiplied by three would be six, multiplied by three would be 18. Not good. The sum of these two is smaller than this. Three and two, it would be three times two, six times two, 12. Not good. 3 plus 6 is smaller than 12. And finally, 6 times 1, 6 times 1, 6. So it's an equilateral, equilateral triangle. And this is the only solution in this particular case. All right. So you have to be very careful and uh, look at, uh, at, the, uh, at the problem, how it's presented more carefully, which I, I was wrong not to do it, uh, with, the, with the arithmetic pro progression among the sides. Uh, because in this case, it's only, like three, uh, like only one solution, because three solutions are not good. Uh, OK, I think I will finish for today, and I will present some other problems in the next lecture. So thanks very much for uh, listening to me. Don't forget that every lecture dedicated to problems must first be examined through the notes on this side, uh, and all the problems you should really try to solve yourself. Listen to the lecture next, and after I finish, try to do exactly the same thing just by yourself. That would be a great help for you. Thanks very much. Bye.